Hi, welcome to Patch of Day 40. I'm going to make, um, just make, mess around with FFT, do some random things. I'm going to create my PFFT first, which for which I need an FFT in. Uh, we'll give that an argument of 1, and then I also need an FFT out. So FFT out with an argument again 1, because I'm only using one inlet, one outlet. And because um, it just makes everything so much easier, I'm going to do a Cartesian to polar conversion before um, doing anything with the data. This will give us our phase and um, amplitude or magnitude outlet output. And then we can do the opposite to bring everything back to um, the Cartesian world that the FFT loves so dearly. So we can put these, uh, hook this up just like this. And this should basically what comes in comes out to a certain extent. And then we need to create something on the outside world. Um, and we might want to save this actually. So we'll save it as, I mean, make a new folder here, um, the FFT Jive, I guess. All right, so I'm going to call this my FFT. Um, and then we'll create something over here. We'll make a PFFT in a new patcher um, with the name of our um, abstraction that we just made. And then we need um, a size for the window. I'll start with 4096. So we're actually going to use much larger windows than that. And then we'll probably use an overlap of two, I guess. Um, that's great. Still can't find it because we need to save that in the same directory in, in my FFT jive. We'll call this um, uh, pad 40. Sounds good. So we can now get this thing to instantiate. Yes, great. So I'm going to have something to play this um, an SF play with, uh, again, a message to open up a file in here. Um, open Anton is the one I'm going to use, Anton.AIF, with a comma, um, loop, space one, so that we can loop that playback and one to actually start it playing back. And that's not even a comma, that's a period. Good. So this is great, and then we can have a, an easy DAC to play this out of. That's good. Alright, so my theory is that this should just work. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, write these values to a buffer. Uh, so I'm going to make a new buffer object with <coughs> the name of the buffer, um, FFT data, let's call it FFT char stuff. I like the sound of stuff better. FFT stuff. Uh, we want to give it a duration. Uh, I'll actually give it, even though this seems kind of wrong, I'm going to give it a, a, a duration of 10,000 milliseconds. And then um, inside my uh, FFT, my PFFT abstraction thing, which is back here, I'm going to access this buffer and I'm going to do kind of an averaging. Uh, this is the index we're interested in, so we're going to basically index that buffer um, FFT stuff and <coughs> this is the index and we can then um, to, to do an average we can add the uh, magnitude of the current frame so, uh, plus that uh, index plus this out with that we can delete that with that and then to do a real averaging, we need to then multiply those two added values by 0.5. Okay. That's my theory, and I'm sticking with it. The other thing we're going to do here, then, is to poke those um, into the same uh, FFT stuff buffer, uh, using, again, the index for the index in here. And then this is going to be our sample value that we're going to write to that buffer. And we'll have a listen to it all as it comes out. So we can save that now. So that it should have been replaced in here. So this averaging, you, know, you can double click on here. It shows you that there's very small area that's actually being used. Alright, so let's make this um, buffer, let's make that a lot longer um, so that we're reading through 
much larger FFT windows uh, just to do that calculation so that I can just get my powers of 2 because that's what the FFT um, window sizes have to be in power of 2. I'm going to do this great little job here where I have a, um, an integer box triggering a, a 2 to raise whatever I put in here to the power of 2. Okay, so you can see our powers of 2 coming down here. Um, and we're going to look for something kind of large, I guess. Um, the largest you can put into an FFT is, I think, uh, I don't remember, 104, is that the largest? Anyway, so let's just try this one, 262. It'll complain in the max window if you make it one too big. So, one, what is it saying? Oh yeah, 131, so yeah, just answered the question. Um, and actually what I've found is that the 131 size, uh, for some reason, maybe someone out there in the world of Max can explain it to me, but it doesn't sound good. So I'm going to give that 65, 536, so 16 to the power 2. So this should give us something interesting, I guess, I hope. And just by accident, I notice when you change the FFT size, um, you get this kind of weird effect. Um, and what I found was that what what works to you know create that weird effect is just to basically change either the writing, um, the factor that you're writing to the index to the buffer, and the factor that you're reading from it. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean um, I'm going to multiply this here, this index value by something, and I guess by default we probably want to multiply it by 1. And then we can also um, put in a receive here, so um, receive, uh, so this is the read part, so we'll read, um, read, uh, I don't know, read, uh, alt, sure read malt and then we can do the same um, on the right hand side we can do a write alt um, that's great put that in there I'm going to send these read and write malts what I would normally do now is to copy those hit save on this and go back and paste them in and just change these over to S instead of R Yes, that's great. And I'm going to use uh, messages for this. I don't know why. So we can have a message for 0 0.5, so it's um, writing or reading um, at a factor of 0.5 and a factor of 2, and then I suppose normal um, would be considered 1, perhaps. Um, so we're going to be missing or um, going to be skipping bands on the FFT, or we're going to be the opposite to that, um, sort of compressing the FFT, which will just create sort of complete pitch shift. Right, so we'll try this. We'll start at one, even though that's what it says in there. We'll turn this thing on. So if I write So I'm not really going to try and explain anything here. I'm going to put this back at 1. Um, I guess if you really want to, you can figure out the buffer, although I see no reason for that. So the other weird thing that I wanted to just show you real quick is instead of 
um, doing this averaging, we can do something different in here. Um, just messing around with arithmetic, we can try dividing um, the uh, current FFT with the uh, stored FFT, uh, which is not an average. I don't know what you're going to call this, but we'll we'll create a new object here uh, with a divide by tilde. Um, and the first thing I suppose when you're going to do signal divides, um, it's not a bad idea to uh, just add a, something into the signal stream so that you're not dividing by zero because of course that just creates explosions. So I'll, I'll just add um, 0.01 or something sort of like that into there. So we're not dividing by zero. <coughs> um, and I'm going to divide this here. I guess I could have just used that plus. And then this thing tends to be pretty loud. I hope 0.1 makes it like, quiet enough. Um, I think this is all I did on this the last time I tried this. Let's just give it a shot. Hit save. I guess you might like put your headphones not quite on your head. That's what I would recommend with just about anything you do in Max. <laughs> all right, let's see how this thing sounds now. that garbagey by this like not just not turn this just turn it down a bit and yes Let's see what that's doing. Of course you get completely different effects depending on the size of your uh, FFT. So if we go this down to 15 power two so we can go down to 32 768 um, it should be getting something Mostly it's just the time that the window goes for you here and there, kind of discrete change in the sound. Alright, so that is pad 40. Uh, see you in the, in the soup, so to speak.